For each generation, we will display several important organisms that may or may not be susceptible to that group of cephalosporins. Cocci will be found on the left, while bacilli will be on the right. Organisms in purple boxes are gram-positives, while the gram-negatives are in the pinkish boxes. If susceptible to a particular generation of cephalosporins, the organism will lie within the green area, while those that are not will be in the red area. While there are always exceptions, we will look at the most widely accepted patterns of antimicrobial activity. And for the sake of simplicity, other types of organisms, such as spirochetes, will only be mentioned when relevant. The second generation of cephalosporins is more heterogeneous in its antimicrobial spectrum of activity than the other generations and is divided into two subgroups, the two cephalosporins, including cephaloxin, and the cephalomycins, including cephotidin and cephoxidin. Both subgroups provide coverage against gram-negative cocci, including Neisseria and Marxella, and are more effective than the first-generation cephalosporins against E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and Proteus mirabilis. Cephaloxamine is a true cephalosporin, and it maintains the first-generation's activity against aerobic gram-positive cocci while providing coverage against Malthus influenza. With efficacy against many respiratory aerobes, it has been frequently employed for the empiric treatment of community-acquired respiratory tract infections. Unfortunately, resistance amongst respiratory pathogens is growing. It is also important to note that cefuroxamine cannot cross the blood-brain barrier well enough to treat meningitis effectively. Antibiotics from the cefamycin subgroup are less effective against Malthus influenza than cefuroxamine. Cephotidin also has decreased activity against staphylococci and streptococci than the first-generation cephalosporins. However, these agents provide coverage against gastrointestinal anaerobes, such as Bacteroides fragilis. Common indications for their use include treatment of intra-abdominal and gynecologic infections and prophylaxis for abdominal and pelvic surgery. Okay, let's pause again and go over some of the more important concepts. Recall that the first generation of cephalosporins provides good coverage against most gram-positive organisms and some gram-negative enterics. The second generation builds on this a bit by improving activity against gram-negatives. Cephaloxin, in particular, provides better coverage against Malthus influenza, while cephalidin and cephoxidin provide coverage against Bacteroides fragilis. For more information, check out our full lecture on the spectrum of activity of the cephalosporin antibiotics.